And we were talking about mice and rats in your home. Well, you know what? Interesting insects. You know, if you had to get a weigh scale and think, okay, would I prefer to have a mouse or a rat or would I prefer to have insects like roaches in my home? You know, funny enough, society almost puts a label on certain types of pests. You know, immediately, I mean, being in real estate, I can tell you that, you know, if I ever go into a home, I see, and I, I've had this, I had this on Power of Sales way back when, where in the daytime, I saw roaches crawling up the walls. Daytime. Mm-hmm. Freaked me right out. So we're going to talk to Joe Bruno of Snap Pest Control. And if you want to check out his website, actually, it's www.snap, S-N-A-P-P-E-S-T-C-O-N-T-R-O-L.com. Joe, Hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> I know, uh, you know, roaches. Oh, oh yeah. man. I mean, just the, the name freaks me out, mm, true, you know, true, true. but yeah, like, I mean, seeing roaches in the daytime, it, it was a vacant house. Uh, it was a power sale. It was a bank property. And back in the nineties, I used to do a lot of powers of sales for a lot of different companies. Right. And now I'm with Sutton Group Quantum uh, mm-hmm. Realty at the time I was with uh, Remax. But uh, God, it, it's unusual to see those in the daytime, isn't it? Uh, yes, they are. They're, they they tend to come out at night as well. They do like to hide in their little spots during the daytime, right? It's, it's going to depend on the kind of roach. There's there's a couple of different roaches that we get in the city. The main one, of course, would be the uh, German roach. It's a brown, narrow roach that you'll find in your kitchen predominantly when you open your kitchen cupboards. That's the one you see. That just like there's just so many of them. They're running around everywhere. The, oh my God! Yeah. And, and they're they're called a German roach. I didn't even yes. know. Really, I could look yeah. that up. You see, yeah, it'll have two white stripes on its head. Uh huh. It's long, narrow, brownish-looking roach. That's the it's it's the one that you probably saw, right? Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of them. <laughs> like that That's house, the one. that property. As a matter of fact, that property. Oh my God, talk about freaking me out! When I got to the the property, it was a sixplex. Okay. And what happened was, is I had to go around to all the different units. So the mm-hmm. top unit uh, up on the third floor. When I tried to push the door open, and I had someone with me because power is a sales. I don't want to go myself. I don't know what I'm expecting. All right. So of course I had the keys, and I push open the door, and I hit something, and the door wouldn't open hard and like wide enough in order for me to get through. Right. So what happened was Brian, who was with me from my office, he said, oh, it's okay, Linda, I'll do that for you. (laughs) Right. And he pushes hard. And sure enough, it was a dresser that was blocking the door. That's what had happened. Oh my God. The minute that he did that, honestly, you saw roaches all living in this dresser. They literally made a beeline for the baseboards. Right. There was hundreds of them. Like I freaked out, totally freaked out. And then Mm. after that, we walk in, we see them on the walls. It was totally, totally infested. Wow. What a shocker. Yeah, I could (laughs) just imagine. Oh my God. I still, I still cringe when I even think about this is many years ago. Like this is back in the early nineties. Right. So, I mean, they multiply really quickly, don't they? They do. They do. And you're, you're definitely talking about the German roach now that you mentioned the the fact that they were in the dresser drawer, that would be something that the German roach would do. They would find a place like that. They do multiply quickly. Female gravid German roach uh, will have an egg case. They call it a othuka. And inside the case, there's 40 eggs, roughly. She can lay, I don't know, six to seven of these egg cases throughout her lifespan, which could be about a year. So each one of those cases now has 40 eggs in it, and she can have six to seven of them within one year. And those eggs themselves, within 45 to 50 days, are now sexually mature enough to have eggs, to lay eggs themselves and mate. So if you do the math, uh, just having one or two gravid females, uh, you may have 10,000 roaches at the end of the year. Oh, my God. <laughs> I hope the audience is listening to this because if you see even one roach in your home, honestly, call Joe because uh, can you, that, the multiplication of that is insane. If you see uh, if you see one ro- roach, hopefully it's right. the ma- a male roach, and it's not a gravid female roach that you got. Well, that's a problem, out. but you wouldn't know until all of a sudden you have a whole uh, you yes. know multitude of roaches around your house. Yes, 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 yes. Now remember that they only need to mate once to have enough sperm in, in their system to to continue the process and lay those egg cases, the six or seven egg cases. Really? Yeah, oh, so like it isn't to, a con- uh, really. It's not a continuous thing where there there's a they, they need to go and find a male mate in order to create the case. Just right. once is enough for her entire lifespan. 
to create all these eggs. So if kind she's in one home and she's laying all these eggs and if she leaves and goes elsewhere, she'd lay more eggs over there. Yes. And she could literally infest six different houses. Easy. 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 As long as she's being transported, yes. They say airports. You got to really, you know, when I go away on vacation, when my husband and I go away, when we come home, honestly, we, we never bring our luggage right into the house. Never. We, we always leave it like now in the wintertime was amazing because you leave it in the garage. Whatever's in there should be killed with the cold. <laughs> that was our theory. Are we wrong? Is there any truth to any of that? Because, I mean, airports, they do say that there is a lot of roaches and, and uh, pests and so on around airports. I would think you'd probably be okay in terms of the roaches getting into your stuff. It's going to be more the bed bugs that get into your stuff now, would at they, an airport. Uh, Maybe when you're sitting and you're waiting for your flight and you're sitting on a nice comfortable chair, what's in that chair? You know, who's, how many people have sat in that chair? And did anybody bring a bed bug with them? Maybe they're, the bed bug's in their luggage, which is sitting right beside the chair. And now it's crawled out and found a seam in that chair somewhere. Oh so my you're God. sitting there. And if you're reading the paper for an hour or so, and, and the bed bug is sensing that you know, your warm being that is given off a good amount of carbon dioxide, it's going to naturally want to gravitate towards you. And if it gets into the cuff of your pants or in your purse, anywhere like that, you can bring it home. And how big are these? I mean, uh, can you see them with the naked eye? You can see them when they're, when they're in their later instar, which is what we'll, we'll call it about six months old. But when they're really small, they're very hard to see with the naked eye. Really? So yeah. when they're six months, are they like the size of a, not, not a fingernail, half, I would half say of your baby fingernail? You're looking at, the, at a, the, you know, an apple seed, maybe a pear <gasps> okay. seed. Okay. It, it would be dark if there's a blood meal involved. It would be a darker color. If not, a little more translucent, but um, definitely about the size of a, of a pear or apple seed. Now, would they actually die from the cold weather? Like if you left them, if you left the luggage in your garage and it was as freezing cold as we've had for the last few months, I mean, would that actually kill them? Or I guess it wouldn't if they're inside with all the clothing. Well, this is the thing. I mean, they're going to be inside the luggage. Yes. So they'll, be, you know, they'll find the warmest spot of the luggage to be in, especially if there's clothing still there. And then they're going to be in a garage with a door. So you know what? I wouldn't take any chances with these things. I'm going to throw my luggage in the snow. <laughs> I, you oh, definitely... <laughs> You want to put it in a, you want to put your luggage in a garbage bag and you want to empty out your contents and throw them right into a dryer at a high heat cycle for at least half an hour to kill off anything that might be in your clothing and then you want to systematically go through your luggage especially the seams and the zippers of your luggage you want to be looking for any kind of insect in those areas there and if you know what just leave your luggage in the garage don't even take any chances Yes. Last thing you want to do is to bring one of them into your house that's gravid. Right. So you should, have, okay, then so empty up your contents and take your luggage and stick it back in the garage. Yeah. Well, absolutely. that makes it, leave them all open, I guess, so that they can go and Yes, and if, take you, really off. Want, if you want to bring your luggage right. into, the, into your home, encase it in a garbage bag mm -hmm. that's tight because they don't, their mouth parts are sucking oriented. So they're not able to chew through the plastic, unlike a roach, which can chew through the plastic have uh, biting mouth parts. It's more like a, a siphon type of a mouth part on a, on a bed bug. So they're encased in there. They can't get out. Wow. You know, yeah. the, uh, the roach, uh, whenever I see roaches now, aside from that crazy experience that I had in that, in that mm -hmm. property, mm -hmm. I remember that movie called Pacific Heights, you know, with Michael Keaton and he had the, uh, and he wanted to get rid of a tenant or something like that, I think right. it was. I can't remember. And he sits there and he had a bottle with had tons of roaches and he's flicking them. Do you remember that movie? Oh yeah, I remember it. That well. was, yeah. With a <laughs> razor blade. With yeah. a razor blade yeah, and he's yeah, got, yeah. yes, oh my God. I think that that really kind of opened everyone's eyes up. I'm going back a few, I'm dating myself here. That was mm -hmm. a few years ago, mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and. And, and that's what made me think about because airports, uh, that was always kind of on the radar as, as being an ideal spot. Maybe another one too is that if you're getting boxes, uh, you know how sometimes you don't want to pay for the five cents for the plastic bag. You don't bring your own bags. You go to the grocery store and you're bringing a cardboard box from a grocery yes. store. Yes. Cardboard box is, uh, is like bringing a condominium for Roach's home. Uh, yes. For the most part. You know, those little tiny corrugated areas that you see around the sides of the cardboard? That's where they like to live. They like to live in there. And the cardboard itself is going to retain the moisture. So it's a nice little habitat for them. So yes, I would be very careful about bringing boxes home, if at all. I, personally, I wouldn't bring any, but I mean, if you really have to, 
Um, stay away from any kind of a fruit box, like a banana box or an uh, apple box or anything like that. Maybe go through, if you have to, maybe a box that has got pharmaceutical products in it or anything else that's non-food related that hasn't been in the food section of your average grocery store is, is preferable. And that's the funny part because a lot of the people would do a beeline pretty much for the fruit boxes because they're the ones that are made really tough. They have the handles on them and Mm -hmm. they're like, oh, wow, this is like perfect. I can carry it nice and easy. They're the ones that are coming from different parts of the world. Exactly. And who knows what they're bringing in. Exactly. Oh, well, there you have it from Joe Bruno of Snap Pest Control. Just to give a quick shout out, can you want to give your email address, Joe? Oh, sure. It's uh, snappestcontrol at gmail.com. And you can reach Joe at 647-991-1803. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato of The Condo Expert. Hang tight. We're going to talk more about pest control and things that you better watch out for. Doesn't matter where you live. They don't pick and choose. So hang tight. I'll be right back. Linda Pinizzato. She's not your typical realtor. She's your real estate counselor, teacher, and advisor. Whether it's a house, townhome, or condo, when you're ready, she's your negotiator. With 34 years of experience, Linda guarantees that you have the real estate knowledge you need to make the right decisions. Call Linda Pinizzato at Sutton Group Quantum Realty, 416-561-7373, or visit her at lindapinizzato.com Hello there, it's Linda Pinizzato of The Condo Expert and you know, I have to thank you for tuning in, for checking in to Connect Me Radio every week we have the shows you know, Wednesday and Friday nights at 7pm and you can also listen to podcasts so lindapinizzato slash podcast dot com and uh, you know, uh, lindapinizzato slash buzzsprout Dot com And also iTunes, just type in Linda Pinizzato or Condo Expert. One thing I want to mention is, although the name is Condo Expert, I try to touch a lot of different subjects because, you know, one thing revolves to the next. I mean, you can talk about condos, you can talk about single family homes, you can talk about the market, the economy. You can talk about last week, it was about bugs and pest control. We've talked about mortgage financing, lawyers, the Condo Act Review, what's going on with our city hall municipalities, provincial government. Today, the episode's been about modular homes. We touched on mobile homes. There isn't a subject that I can't touch on. And if you are interested in listening to something that has tweaked your mind and you just can't find the real information, please email linda at lindapinizzato.com because this is where you're going to get the information. And it's fun, it's exciting, and at any given time, just type in condoexpert.com and it will give you the total rundown of all the shows that have been out there. There's over 200 shows. Now's the time to learn more. As a realtor for the last 35 years, I've been so fortunate to learn so many different things about everything that we have talked about, and I'm here to help you. So thank you so much for tuning in. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato at The Condo Expert. Hope to hear from you soon, and have a wonderful, fabulous day.